Good afternoon. Welcome to Midday Prayers for Wednesday of Holy Week. As we begin Psalm 70 and John 13, 21 to 35, we'll focus our time of devotion. Psalm 70 and John chapter 13, verses 21 through 35. Before we begin, um, let's just take a few moments to collect our thoughts and to find ways to be fully present here for this practice that we are entering into to mark each day of Holy Week. He was born in the image of a human being. He was born in the image of a human being. Lord, hear me when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come. My heart says, seek God's face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Psalm 70. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor. Who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, Aha! Aha! turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, O Lord, do not delay. I pray to you, Lord, my prayer rises with the sun. You hear my words, my groans, my cries for help. Lord, we thank you that you hear us. Lord Jesus, we thank you that in your cries of agony, you were heard because of your faithfulness. And as the Apostle Paul says, we are now hidden with Christ in God, and we are heard because of your faithfulness on our behalf. Your grace surrounds those who take refuge in you. You protect them and crown them with your favor. Jesus said, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. A reading this afternoon from John chapter 13, verses 21 to 35. John chapter 13 Verses 21 to 35. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter, therefore, motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. 
Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. As we are on each midday of Holy Week, looking at John's description of the last week of Jesus' life, we've been looking at these events and what Jesus says in light of the fact that what he is going to do in this week of time is he is going to undo all that we have done wrong in the world. He's going to fix what we have broken. He is going to mend what we have severed. He is going to bring back together that which we have torn apart. And what he now tells us as he is about to go to a place that we can't go, he says, here's what I want you to do while I go to the place where you cannot yet come. He says, I want you to love one another the way I've loved you. And there's many things that we could emphasize about that new commandment, but what's new about it is not the command to love, but it's the pattern that we are supposed to follow in love. And I think even here within John 13, we see that what's new about the pattern of love is that we are called by Jesus, who is going to heal the world on our behalf, to love those who even betray us, to love the Judases in our lives. Jesus shared food with Judas, knowing what Judas was going to do. Jesus washed Judas' feet, knowing what Judas was going to do. Jesus even loved those who were responsible for his death. And this act of love, even for those who betray him, is what is going to lead to the healing of the world. Brothers and sisters, as Jesus calls us to participate with him in the healing of the world, he calls us to love indiscriminately. He calls us to love those who betray us. My prayer is that the Spirit of Jesus during these holy days would show us and empower us to love in the way that Jesus loves. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself. Taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Let us pray. Do not hide your face from us, O God. You have been our help. Do not leave us to the malice of our enemies, O God of our salvation. Trustworthy God, we bring our prayers to you because we rely on you to protect and provide in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. You have loved us and made us in your image. We pray for ourselves and those dear to us. Father, we remember before you those who are suffering with the coronavirus, 
those who are concerned that they might be suffering with the coronavirus. We pray for their healing. We pray for the protection of those around them. We pray that they would make wise choices. We also pray for those moms and dads who are caring for their students, who are now forced to do their learning at home. We ask that you would empower them with great patience and love. Would you work within them the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control? Would you please, by the power of the Holy Spirit, surround and protect and help those who are facing unique challenges because of this pandemic. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. You are mindful and care for all of us. We pray for our community and for our neighbors. Father, we remember before you the physical neighborhoods that each of us live in. You are aware of what is going on in each home in the neighborhoods that we live in. And we remember before you those who are particularly lonely, those who feel as though they've been forgotten. I pray that you would empower and send your sons and daughters to check on, to show interest in, and in safe and appropriate ways, show love. We also remember before you the children of those senior citizens who find themselves perhaps in hospitals, who find themselves in nursing homes. We ask that as this situation has caused them to be distant in a way that they don't desire, that you would comfort and encourage them, that you would give them patience, and that you would help them to find imaginative and creative ways to reach out and to show compassion. Father, we also remember before you those who are grieving the loss of loved ones during these days, who are also not given the opportunity to grieve in what we regard as a normal way. We ask you to comfort and even grieve with them during these very strange and difficult times. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Your word is life to your people. We pray for the church in all places that we may bear witness to your reign of justice, peace, and joy. Father, I remember before you the pastors in our community. As we prepare for Good Friday and Easter, and as we are in very unfamiliar territory, Help us to understand that the truth and the hope of the resurrection is not dependent upon our ability to plan a gathering, but yet the risen Christ by the Spirit is present and reigning among us, even in our homes. So as we find various ways to enter into the truth and hope of Easter, give us wisdom And give us patience to wait before the Lord to be still and to trust in you. And in that trust, would we somehow uniquely bear witness to the truth that the one to whom all authority in heaven and on earth has been given, that he is living and that he reigns and in our homes, in our neighborhoods, would we bear witness to that reign. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Your heart is grieved by injustice. We pray for the world, for all who are ensnared in greed, violence, and oppression. Father, we remember before you our leaders asking that you would give them wisdom to make wise decisions during, again, these very unfamiliar days. We pray for protection and wisdom for President Trump, for all who give him counsel and and wisdom. We pray the same for Governor Pritzker, asking that you 
would protect him and give him through those who surround him the wisdom to do what is best. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We offer you now other concerns we carry in our hearts. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. God of strength, in days of testing, you deliver us from fear to love. Pierce our vanity, empty us of pride, that we may see your image in all humankind and like Christ embrace both neighbor, betrayer, and enemy. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Let us now pray together in the words that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who has loved us and through grace has given us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort and strengthen our hearts in every good work and word. Amen.